The drama with CrossFit continues. Now, this is on the back end of a horrible event that happened a couple of weeks back at the CrossFit Games, where Lazar Jukic unfortunately passed away due to a lot of preventable circumstances. I made a full video that you can check out here, but spark notes, a three and a half mile run was programmed into an open water swim. There's a lot of circumstances that made this unsafe at the time, none the least of which was very hot water temperatures that didn't allow athletes to disperse the heat from their body. Many other athletes had problems, but unfortunately his was the one that caused, uh, of course, him to pass away. Um, now, on the back end of that, you see the live stream video. There are lifeguards right there not paying attention. The, the staff didn't start looking for him until after all the athletes finished as per athlete recollection who was there. Um, the event was canceled for the rest of the day, but then they had some really concerning ways in which they decided to continue the competition. First, they had all the athletes into a group. Then a few people were saying that they didn't want to compete. CrossFit HQ made the decision to split them into smaller groups. Then somehow it went from they weren't going to compete to now they were going to compete. I wasn't there. I don't know exactly what happened. That's what's rumored to have happened. And it certainly echoed that things were not kosher by all of the athletes putting out statements against CrossFit and questioning some of their practices from Danny Spiegel to Brent Fikowski to Jeff Adler. Um, a lot of the top names in the sport have been talking about friction for a long time. Now, on top of this, Brent Fikowski heads up the PFAA, which is an association made to help liaise between the athletes and the, the CrossFit organization to help with things like movement standards uh, and things like safety. Now, he released a timeline of things where he was asking for details on outdoor events and the PFA, he was doing that on behalf of the PFAA, and it, it wasn't being met with open arms. It wasn't, didn't cause any sort of transparency until he released publicly that there was no transparency. And then Dave Castro went on a podcast uh, or went on a YouTube channel, something of that nature, to then talk a little bit more about the events, which seemed like more of a safe face thing than it did as a genuine concern for the athletes. Um, now, on the back end of all of this, CrossFit's... Uh, athletes through the PFAA have come out with a few demands for them to be able to continue on with CrossFit and to quote, begin to restore athlete trust in CrossFit sport. There have been, there's been a lot of friction between CrossFit athletes and CrossFit HQ in the past. And for full transparency, I make these videos to, to bring more attention to the situation, to encourage others to be better. And because I am not in the CrossFit community in any official way, but I have a lot of friends in the CrossFit community and I have a platform in a similar space and I don't need to worry about the ramifications if I say something that CrossFit would rather me not say. I can't be banned from a CrossFit competition. I can't be ousted from a CrossFit organization. Uh, so I just find it useful to be in my position to, to bring a little bit more attention uh, to these problems. Now, uh, the first thing they asked for is transparency around the, transparency around the third party investigation that CrossFit has vowed to take uh, of Lazar's death and then appropriate plans for improved safety moving forward. This is just a no brainer. They, they have to have this to be able to continue. Next, they've asked for an independent safety team to be created and to liaise with the PFAA on a regular basis. I hope, I hope that this happens. And I'm gonna give some thoughts around what I think will actually happen, but um, I hope that this happens. The third, and this was uh, surprising to me, uh, Dave Castro is removed from his position on the sport team. The reason that this is surprising is because Dave Castro is the one who started the games, um, but there has been some friction. It's funny, when, when I talk to people, and he's one of those sort of larger-than-life figures, and I've, I've asked, what's, what's the deal with, with Dave Castro? Is there a problem, whatever? And, and it's always sort of just a very vanilla answer, like, no, nah, I don't know. Some people like him, some people don't. Uh, which is why I was surprised to see that as like a mandatory, he must go. But then I remembered that he was the one who went on the uh, YouTube uh, or the podcast when the PFA came out to share their lack of transparency. And then he came out somewhere else to give more transparency on a more general forum. Now, I just want to talk about him a little bit. Um, I've got all this online. I'm assuming that it's true. Um, we're going to treat all this as hearsay, though, because I have no way of actually properly vetting this information. He spent 12 years as a Navy SEAL, 
And then he founded the CrossFit Games, first taking place in 2007. And from 2007 to 2022, it's my understanding that he was largely in charge of the games and the programming for the games. Now, in January of 2022, he was fired from his position as games director from the owner of CrossFit. And he was removed from CrossFit altogether. It wasn't really said why, but it was simply said he didn't fit the quote unquote go forward plan. Uh, I don't know exactly what that is, but this is really strange. The only thing I could find online for an actual reason is something, some inflammatory type behavior online, but it seemed like it was sort of like a Dana White ask. It didn't seem like anything was crazy over the top. Um, so I don't exactly know what happened there. But five months after he was fired in January 2022, he was brought back onto CrossFit and then a guy named Justin Berg left CrossFit and Dave Castro was brought back originally the capacity to be said that he's not part of the sport team. Then when Justin Berg quit, his position was shifted and now Dave Castro was the general manager of sport. Confusing. I, I don't understand what's going on there, but he went from fired to brought back but not part of the sport team to the general manager of sport all within five, uh, say six or seven months. Uh, really bizarre, really bizarre circumstances. Now, in 2022 and 2023, Adrian Bosman programs the games. Um, and he programmed the games. This is sort of the big point of contention because then in 2024, Dave Castro programmed the games for the individuals. And of course, this is where the problem was. And, and this, is where, this is where I suppose the origination of Dave being asked to be removed from the games comes from. CrossFit seems to have this really strange thing that, and the, the thing that I have heard is that it's sort of just a be hard mentality, like a David Goggins, like it's going to war, like it's not a sport. If something's too hard, toughen up. If something's too tiring, get fitter. Uh, if something's too heavy, get stronger, et cetera, et cetera, which is a good sentiment, I think, when it comes to professional sport. But when you're pushing that to the absolute extremes and putting people in danger, it's very different. My experience with this, actually, at the Rogue Invitational in uh, 2022, they weren't giving us all of our events at first, which is uh, absurd in Strongman because we need several weeks to prepare and, and make our body safe for it. And we didn't find out our last event until three or four weeks out from the show, which um, would be a lot of time for CrossFitters to learn an event. Uh, but it, it only gave us a few weeks. Now, thankfully, no one got hurt and it was a very low injury risk activity. It's, it's no criticism on the Invitational at all. Um, because it was safe in that regard. But it did open my eyes to how little notice that CrossFit can give to the athletes on top of the fact that they actually don't even have uh, notice of the events until straight away. Uh, there's also the fact that in the games, uh, the last event, and I think at all major CrossFit competitions, the last event isn't announced until all of the other events are done. So you can almost have these options of events and you can, you can try to make more parity say someone's up by 50 points and they're bad at handstand walks, well, you can put in a whole heap of handstand walks just to spice things up a bit. I've never heard of a sport like that. I've never heard of a situation like that. Um, now, of course, that's more on the competitive side than the safety side, but uh, I am confused by some things um, in CrossFit. Now, the question arises, how will CrossFit play this? I think there's three ways that, that CrossFit HQ can, can respond. One, and hopefully they adhere to all of the requests of the PFA and they start working together. And this is a real moment of change. Number two is that they reject the PFA altogether and they do really what happened with World's Strongest Man and, and IFSA, uh, which for those of you who don't know, World's Strongest Man was existing fine. And then a new organization came in and basically said, if you compete for us, you can't compete for Worlds. All these guys weren't happy with Worlds. So they went over to IFSA. But then Worlds just found all new guys, just got those guys in for a few years. IFSA ended up failing and they ended up uh, continuing on, of course. So that is a possibility. It is possible for them to say, well, the athletes who want to show up, they can show up. Um, now, most likely, uh, in personal opinion, like, most likely they will publicly agree to the requests. I think they'll provide a degree of transparency on the third-party investigation. Uh, I think they'll create a safety team that, will be an internal safety team. And I, I personally wouldn't have the utmost confidence. Now, I hope I'm wrong, but I personally wouldn't have the utmost confidence that they would have 
wide sweeping changes in terms of communication and uh, transparency and uh, you know, really impacting the safety of the athletes. <coughs> um, and when it comes to Dave Castro, he's only been asked to be removed from the sport team. Uh, he hasn't been asked to be removed from CrossFit organization altogether. So I imagine that he'll just get shifted to a, a slightly different role. Uh, but the difficulty here is you don't have, you don't know the, the full internal processes of an organization, especially one that's privately owned. They're under no obligation to tell you what every individual in the company is doing. So will he still be programming games behind the scenes? Who knows? Who knows how it's going to go? Who knows how it will transpire? Um, but one, I think being critical of CrossFit HQ is required at the moment for them to, to be inspired to change. And two, hats off to uh, Brent Fikowski and the rest of the PFAA, of which Lazar was actually on the board, which makes this all the more heartbreaking. But hats off to them for really taking some strong steps to say that, that this stops now. Uh, for context, two friends of mine are on there. Brent is one of them and Pat Vellner is one of them. Uh, both of those guys are nearing the end of their career, I imagine. Uh, they've gone to many, many, many CrossFit games. And so I have full confidence that they are doing it to make the sport better moving forward for when they're done with it. And that's a sign of an honorable person and someone that, that I respect, that I look up to, um, and that I'm happy to, happy to call a friend. And I think everyone in CrossFit should be happy to look up to them as people to help get the right things done moving forward. I would love to know your guys' thoughts. As always, lift heavy, be kind, and we will catch you tomorrow.